We're going to try and figure out what the voting schedule is, and we'll go next uh, to Senator Daines. Chairman Wyden, thank you, as well as the Ranking Member Risch, for holding today's hearing. I also want to thank you for your support and leadership on our bipartisan Community and Hydropower Improvement Act. Today, we have the opportunity to hear testimony in support for Senate Bill 1521, the Community and Hydropower Improvement Act. This bill is the largest bipartisan hydropower permitting reform bill in two decades. And it has the support across the political spectrum and from environmental as well as industry leaders. I want to thank Senator Cantwell, Chairman Wyden, Ranking Member Risch for joining me on this important effort. There are few energy or permitting bills that have the breadth of support from both sides of the aisle like this bill does. Likewise, the bill has support from a large group of local and national groups. Chairman Wyden, I'd like to ask unanimous consent to have the following quotes and letters of support included in the record, which are a letter from 25 leading hydropower producers, a letter from 15 members of the Uncommon Dialogue Group, which include National Hydropower Association, American Rivers, and National Congress of American Indians, three former FERC chairmen and two former FERC commissioners, Clear Path Action, Northwestern Energy, the Permitting Institute, National Rural Electric Co-ops, Montana Rural Electric Co-ops, Pacific Northwest Economic Region, Citizens for Responsible Energy Solutions, and over a dozen other letters and quotes. Not objection, so ordered. The support from the left, from the right, and the center is remarkable and underscores the need to get this bill done. The Community and Hydropower Improvement Act streamlines permitting and licensing as well as increases tribal engagement. The bill creates an expedited licensing process for powering non-power dams and building closed loop pump storage. It limits the scope of environmental reviews and mitigation to real on the ground and ongoing efforts. It increases the tribal engagement by including tribes in the licensing and conditioning process, and it promotes healthy habitats through fish passage and downstream improvements. Let's be clear, this bill's a compromise with very diverse stakeholder engagement throughout the process. I encourage my colleagues and stakeholders to look at this bill as a whole. In order to make this meaningful change, all sides had to come together, they must come together, negotiate a deal, and move forward as one. And that's what the Community and Hydropower Improvement Act does. Hydropower is critical to helping meet our country's energy needs. It's safe, reliable, affordable, and provides good paying jobs. With hydropower producing about one third of all the renewable energy and over 6% of all electricity in the United States, this bipartisan bill must be included in any permitting reform discussion. Since the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission isn't here to give oral testimony, I'd like to highlight provisions from the chairman's written testimony. Chairman Phillips states in his testimony that he commends the bipartisan effort, that he specifically supports the bill's attention to promoting hydropower at non-power dams and ensuring tribes have greater authority in tribal land, and finally, that his staff readies to address and clarify the other important provisions in this bill. I want to thank Chairman Phillips and his staff for all the work he's done and look forward to working with him on this bill moving forward. I do encourage my colleagues to support this bill and look forward to having it on the next legislative markup. Briefly, before I finish, Mr. Chairman, one quick local issue that's very urgent that we have in Montana. Uh, Commissioner Tootin, thank you for being here today. And you know what this issue is, as we chatted on the phone. It's about the levels on Flathead Lake. As you know, Governor Gianforte, Congressman Zinke, and I have been working to find a solution on the falling water levels at Flathead Lake. I know that you and I have had calls on this issue. My staff's been in close communication with yours and, th and throughout the last few weeks. This is a big deal for Montanans, a major concern, especially in the northwestern portion of our state. While much of Montana is experiencing better than average snowpack and rainfall, and I think this is part of the, some of the misperceptions even back home, a lot of Montana's looked like Ireland this spring. We've had higher than average snowpacks, 
better than average spring and early summer rains. But up in the northwest part of our state, where Flathead Lake is, uh, we are suffering a drought. And so that is why some folks in parts of our state don't quite fully appreciate what's going on in the Flathead, where they have not been getting the, the normal snow packs, and then they had a, a higher temperatures in the spring, on, and the snow melt was faster than expected. It's a pocket of drought. But by the way, this lake is important for agriculture, recreation, and the local economy. It's extremely important we find a lasting solution to this issue. I think we need a more dynamic arrangement with BOR when they start seeing, they make a forecast, they start seeing real-time data coming out in terms of snowpacks, rainfall, snow melt to adjust the uh, forecast. I encourage you to keep working with our governor back home in Montana and local officials and stand ready to help in any way needed. And thank you, Commissioner. Thank, thank you.